Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson in Assets and Bases on Physical Science. In this lesson, we're doing Assets and Bases, and we've been doing it for a couple of days, and we're just going to carry on learning about Assets and Bases. So yesterday we were talking about, I think I was talking about Batman and the Joker, and I was talking about the difference between strong and weak and dilute and concentrated solutions. And I think we got as far as saying that the difference between strong and weak acids were the dissociation. So a strong acid is going to dissociate completely and a weak acid is going to dissociate very, very incompletely. So an example of a strong acid would be HCl, which will break up into H plus ions, plus Cl minus ions, and of course the H plus ions will join onto the water to form your H3O plus ions, which are the things that are quite dangerous and um, other things that burn our skin, etc. So that would be a very strong acid compared to, for example, ethanoic acid, which is CH3COOH, which in solution breaks up into CH3COO minus plus H plus, and again that H plus will join with water to form H3O plus. But the point is that you'll notice that it doesn't give off a lot of its hydrogens. It only gives you one hydrogen compared to its huge molecular mass. So therefore, this is considered a weak acid. Now, there's a difference again between concentrated and dilute solutions. And the concentration is, an easy way for me to explain this to you is that remember the concentration is the number of particles per unit volume. So a high concentration means that there's going to be tons of those particles, okay, in the volume compared to a low concentration where there might be one or two of those particles. An example again, if we talk about the joker and you hanging upside down on top of the thing, let's say we take a hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid, okay, and he hangs you over the barrel and it's concentrated, which means that there's tons and tons of particles of HCl in this water solution. That would be bad, okay, that would be very bad because it's not only a strong acid, but it's a strong acid with a high concentration, which means that there's a great likelihood that your body will get, come into contact with HCl how, or with the H3O plus ions, okay? However, if the joker is hanging you over a strong acid, again, let's take HCl, hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid, but it is very weak. I mean, it's very dilute. Then what happens is there might be only three or four particles of HCl in this huge barrel, which means you don't have to worry about it at all because there is so f there are so few that they actually don't do can't do any damage to you. Okay, so the concentration is the number of moles per unit volume compared to a strong acid and a weak acid. A strong acid is one that dissociates completely or ionizes completely, whereas a weak acid doesn't. Now, a strong acid can be prepared as either a concentrated or dilute solution. In order to do that, we need to use a solution which has an exact concentration, and that is known as a standard solution. So standard solution is one with exact concentration of solute in a solvent is known. Someone's measured it out already, okay? So, Concentrated solution is one where there's a high ratio of dissolved substance, acid or base, to solvent. Please understand that if you've got two liquids, you've got a solute and a solvent, right? And generally, we would speak about the solute being the um, like the salt or the powder or the solid that is dissolved into the liquid. But you can have a homogeneous or homogeneous liquid okay, solution, in which case we, what we're doing is we're mixing two liquids, okay, and what would happen then is the one that's a smaller quantity is called the solute, and the one that's a bigger quantity is called the solvent, okay. So a concentrated solution is when there's a high ratio of solute to solvent, okay, whereas dilute solutions, there is a very low ratio of dissolved substance to solvent. 
So here's a table of basically strong wheat concentrated in dilute. Just to give you an idea and to remind you of exactly what we're saying. We're saying that if there is a strong acid, there is a high percentage of the particles form ions in solution. Whereas a weak acid, only a small percentage form ions in solution. A strong base is again going to form a high percentage of ions. Admittedly, these ions are H3O plus ions and these ions are OH minus ions. But the point is that there will be a high percentage of them, lots of them. If it's a strong acid compared to the weak acid, it's going to have a low percentage. Then you've got concentrated is going to have a large number of moles versus dilute, which is going to have a small number of moles per unit volume in the solution. So let's look at an example and we need to work out the concentration. So we know the concentration is number of moles over volume. And again, I'm going to stress that you guys should have your periodic table with you because you know that we're doing acids and bases and you need therefore to have your data sheets and your formula um data sheets and your yeah formula so concentration is number of moles over volume okay number of moles is mass over molar mass so we've got mass okay and we've got the volume we therefore need to work out the number of moles so we need the molar mass so we need to find the molar mass of h2so4 Okay, so hydrogen has a molar mass of one, obviously so that's two times one, plus the molar mass of sulfur, which is 32, plus the molar mass of oxygen, which is 16, so it's going to be four times 16, so that's two plus 32 plus 64, um, which becomes four and two, six and two is eight, and three and six is 98. So that's 98 kilojoules, okay, well, sorry, not kilojoules, um, grams per mole, kilojoules, grams per mole. So that is the molar mass of sulfuric acid. Now we've got the mass, we've got the molar mass, we can find out the number of moles. So therefore we can say N is equal to 0, 0,27 divided by 98. And we'll need a calculator for this. Let's get it out. So we're going to go 0 0.27 divided by 98 equals, that's no use to us, 0 0.002755. So I'm going to change that into, I wonder if I can, shift setup. And I'm going to change it to scientific notation and make it a three. And then say, so okay, fine, SD. Here we go. 2.76 times 10 to the minus three. So it becomes 2.76 times 10 to the negative three. Okay, let me just explain to you what I did there. I'm going to go back shift mode and I'm going to just do it as normal, eight, and make it three decimal, I mean two. Okay, now we've got the answer of 27 over 90, 9,800. And if I press the ST button, it becomes 0, 0, 0, 0.027551. Okay, but the deal is with science that we're supposed to round off to two decimal places. So even if I wanted to, I could round off to three decimal places, but that's going to be 0 0.03, 0 0.003, which is kind of not very accurate. But if I change this, to scientific notation, then I can include more significant numbers. So I'm going to go shift mode. Okay, it totally depends on your calculator. And I'm choosing seven for science and three because I only wanted two decimal places afterwards. And then I press the SD and I get 2.76. You guys, welcome to press more numbers so that you can get bigger numbers across it. So therefore, we know that the number of moles, come on, is 2.76 times 10 to the minus three. Now we want the concentration. So the concentration is number of moles, which is 2,76 times by 10 to the negative 3, divided by the volume. And please note the volume is supposed to be in decimeters cubed, and this is. So this is 183,7. So again, we're going to get out our calculator, and we're going to divide by 183.7 
equals and press the SD button and we get 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5. So therefore it's going to become 1 comma 5 times by 10 to the negative 5 and remember grade 12 is your units and what are your units? This is concentration. Concentration is number of moles over volume so it is moles per decimeter cubed. There you go, moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, let's do another example. If you look at this carefully, you'll see that there's a couple of issues here. The first is that it's 32.8 milligrams of hydrochloric acid is added to 12,76 cubic centimeters. So first of all, let's talk HCl. That's the formula for hydrochloric acid. Okay, we know that number of moles is mass over molar mass. 32.8 milligrams is not the SI unit. We need it in grams. So in order to get it into grams, what do we do? Well, we have to divide by a thousand. So we're going to take 32.8, 32.8 and divide it by a thousand. And that is going to give us 3.28 times by 10 to the minus 2. If you don't like that now, what we can do is just go back shift mode and then go 8 and then go 2. And then if you press the SD button, you get 0 0.0328. So you know what? I'm going to take it to the third decimal just for this. So it becomes 0 0.03. So this becomes, okay, well, let's make it 0 0.0328, okay? Grams. 12.76, we also need to divide this by 1,000, so it's 12 comma 76. And the way you can do it, an easy way to do it, is to just remember that you have to move the comma three ways that way. So it becomes one, two, three. So it becomes 0 comma 0,176 decimeters cubed. Okay, so now we've got the mass and we've got the volume. We now need to find the number of moles. Number of moles is the mass, which is 0, 0, 0,0328, divided by the molar mass of H hydrogen chloride, which is 1 plus 35,45. So if we pop that in our calculator, we get 0. 0.328 divided by 36.45. All I did was add the one. And that gives you this horrible thing. And now I definitely want my SD mode. Um, so let's do scientific notation and three. Okay, so that becomes 9 times by 10 to the minus 4. So that is 9 times by 10 to the negative 4 moles. That's the number of moles we have. Okay, okay then our concentration therefore is going to be 9 times by 10 to the negative 4 divided by the volume in decimeters cubed, which is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0,0,1276. So let me just check, one, two, three, I'm right. So then, okay, so we got nine, oh, I've done this already, exponent four, divided by naught point naught one two seven six equals 7.05 times by 10 to the six. 7.05 times by 10, to the six. Really? Let me just check that. Oh, no wonder that's 10 to the minus. Mm, wonder, 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 wonder. Okay, so let's just change it. Ah, oh, there we go. Apparently not supposed to rush it. There we go, negative, better, equals, much better, better answer, 7.05 times 10 to the negative 2, negative 2, which is the same as 0, 0, 0, 0,705, which is the same as 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0,71 if you want, I mean 0, 0,7, that's it. Um, 
what would be seven one, but we don't going to do this in places. And that is concentration. So therefore, we're going to write that as moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, not too difficult. Hey, the only tricky thing here was to convert this to grams and remember to convert this to decimeters cubed and then work it out. Okay. Now let's talk about KA and KB. Now we did just done, we've just finished chemical equilibrium. And you know that chemical equilibrium KC is going to be the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants, right? And it gives us a measure of the extent of the reaction. So in other words, if there's a very big KC, if KC is greater than one, it means that there's lots of products, okay? Which means the direction runs to the right, da, 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 da. If KC is smaller than one, it means we've got lots of reactants, okay? Now, we have a similar thing here for KA and KB where if your Ka is bigger than one, it means we've got a nice strong acid because it means it's dissociated completely. Whereas if Ka is smaller than one, we've got a very weak acid. Okay, so if you, for example, look at this, we've got a strong acid, it breaks up entirely. So remember that your Ka and Kb are the same as Kc, you only put in aqueous and gas. So we're not going to put the water thing in, so it becomes H3O plus multiplied by Br minus concentrations all over the concentration of HBr. There you go. So that is how that would work, okay? And like I said, if Ka is bigger than 1, we've got a strong acid. And if Ka is smaller than 1, we have a weak acid. So another example here would be a weak acid. Um, you can see that we can ignore that but there. So this is going to be again H3O plus and this one CH3COO minus all over CH3COOH. And what does this show us? Okay, this shows us that and again, if we have Ka of bigger than 1, we've got a strong acid. And if Ka is smaller than 1, it means we have a weak acid. And we know that this is ethanoic acid and it's a weak acid. Therefore, we know that the Ka is going to be a fraction, right? So now, yeah, it's just a couple of acids that you're going to come across. Things that you probably will hear about but not really use are your oxalic acid, and your hydrofluoric acid. The others and hydrobromic acid, really. Okay, the other ones we do, you will have heard of or will hear of. Um, so basically, you've got hydrochloric acid, which is HGL, sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4, um, oxalic acid, you don't really have to worry about. You only use it in organic chemistry, I think, a little bit. Sulfurous acid is H2SO3, and ethanoic acid is CH3COOH. Okay, so now, never mind the formula, let's look at the Ka values. So the Ka value for hydrochloric acid was, or hydro, yeah, hydrochloric acid is 1.3 times 10 to the 6. Okay, which is quite high, it means that there's big Ka values, which means it's a strong acid. Your H2SO4 is broken up into two stages. You get H2SO4 breaks up into H plus plus HSO, uh, what is it, 4 minus, that then HSO4 minus breaks up further to H plus plus SO4 to minus. Okay, so the first hydrogen, the first one, this one here, okay, the Ka value is 1 times by 10 to the 3. So think about that. That means that there's lots of the products and less the reactants because it's a big positive number. It's 1,000, right? So that Ka value is 1,000 means that there are a lot of these ions floating around. The second one is 1 times by 10 to the negative 2. So the Ka of getting the second hydrogen off is much more difficult, okay? In fact, it's going to run to the 
opposite side of the reaction. So there's going to be a lot of HSO4 minus and very little of this. Okay, now let's look at sulfurous acid, the same thing, exactly the same thing. Lots when it comes to the first hydrogen being removed and not so much when it comes to the second hydrogen. And you can see that your ethanoic acid finally has um, 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 and therefore it's considered a very weak acid. Right, so strong bases are exactly the same as strong acids when it comes to Ka and Kb, where Kb, if it's bigger than one, means that it's a strong base. And if it's smaller than one, then it's a weak base. So if Kb is smaller than one, then it is a weak base, right? And then what else? We also know that we can write it out with excluding the liquids. Okay, so we end up with the concentration of the products, which is Na plus multiplied by OH minus all over NaOH. Okay, so that would be a strong base, so therefore Kb would be much greater than one. A weak base would be, for example, ammonia, and again, we wouldn't include the water. So this would be NH4 positive multiplied by OH minus all over NH3. There we go. Okay, so now let's talk about acids and bases in the reactions. What you guys should know is that generally an acid and a base when they react form salt and water. Okay, there are four reactions, acid and base form salt and water, acid and metal, acid and a carbonate, acid and a whatever, but, um, and we will go through them, but an acid and a base when they react form salt and water. And when I say salt this time, again at grade 12s, I don't mean this necessarily. I mean any ionic substance that will will conduct electricity when dissolved will conduct electricity electricity when dissolved okay so that is what i mean by salt in this case they've used hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide so that's obviously going to give me sodium chloride plus water out okay now what is the definition of a salt a salt is a neutral ionic compound there you go of made up of cations and anions it is a result of an acid base neutralization reaction so it's actually a result of a reaction um but let's just talk about cations cations are positive ions and anions are the negative ones, the negative ions. Okay, and the easy way to remember it for me is that the T is a plus and the N is for negative, but that's just me. Right, so let's talk about neutralization. When an equivalent amount of acid and base react, the reaction is said to have reached the equivalence point. At this point, neutralization has been achieved. Okay, so let's think about that. What we're saying is that when you've reached the equivalence point, okay, that's obviously when neutralization occurs, it means that an equivalent amount of acid and base react, okay? But obviously that depends on your concentrations and we will talk about that in a second. So let's just talk about the definition. Equivalence point is defined as when stoichiometrically equivalent number of moles of both reactants has been added to the reaction vessel. Okay, let's try again. When a stoichiometrically equivalent number of moles of both reactants has been added to the reaction vessel. In other words, they're saying, yeah. In other words, they're saying that basically if you've got a, um, a reaction that can go both forwards and backwards, then obviously when in the reverse reaction, the product is actually a reactant. Okay, we'll talk a bit more about that later. This definition, um, I would say it's, it's important, but it's not the most important definition. Neutralization reaction involves an acid and a base ready to form water, and that is important. That is the important one. That neutralization, 
Right, so now let's talk about some examples of acids and bases. So remember I said you an acid and a base and it forms salt and water. So we're going to write these reactions out. So hydrochloric acid is HCl plus sodium hydroxide is NaOH, okay? So it's always the first with the last and the first with the last. So it becomes NaCl plus water, da -da, a salt and a water. Now let's try hydrogen bromide with potassium hydroxide. So you've got hydrogen bromide plus potassium hydroxide. Okay. Now let's see what's going to happen. The hydrogen is going to join up with the hydroxyl to form water. So it becomes H2O. And what is left is the potassium and the bromine. So potassium and bromide are going to react with each other. This time we've got hydrochloric acid with sodium hydrogen carbonate. Sodium hydrogen carbonate. So we've got HCl and we have added Na, sodium hydrogen carbonate, H2CO3. That's it, sodium hydrogen carbonate. Excellent. Right, whoopsie, what happened there? Sorry, let me just see where I was. Whoopsie, it's over there. I'm over there. Okay, sorry. So it's sodium hydrogen carbonate. So now what do we need to do? We need to show what make is made. So do you agree, and I hope you do know this, that what you do when you get a, a acid and a carbonate, you always get a salt plus a carbon dioxide out plus a water. So the easiest way to work out what happens is to write that out. You're going to have carbon dioxide and a water. So then what is left is obviously sodium chloride. Okay, and then you just have to balance. Okay, so if we look at this, we've got three hydrogens, we've got three oxygens over there and one carbon. Um, I just want to think about this. Carbonic acid is H2CO3, so hydro, yeah, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, there was a typo. Okay, right, so there we've got two H's already over there, and then we've got one oxygen, two oxygens. Actually, it's already balanced, how cool is that? So an acid plus a carbonate or even a hydrogen carbonate is always going to give you a salt plus carbon dioxide plus water. Okay, now let's talk about the uses of neutralization reactions. We're not talking about the uses of acids and bases. We're talking about when can we use neutralization. So the first use that is spoken about is calcium oxide. Calcium oxide is used to neutralize acidic soil, okay? Your soil needs to be a specific type of, have a specific type of pH. Um, and an interesting thing that you might want to know is that it totally depends on what your pH is of your soil as to how your plants will grow. So, for example, you've got Christmas roses. Well, one gets Christmas roses. Now, Christmas roses can either be blue or they can be pink. Okay. Now, what's interesting is that in acidic soil, they are pink in color. And in alkaline soil, they are blue in color. Okay. And there's a very famous murder... Um, story and it's when I say story I mean it's based on a true life where basically what happened was that someone killed I don't know somebody their neighbor whatever and what they did was they buried the body in the garden in their garden but they had quite a big garden and then what they did was they used lye now lye is an alkali it's kind of like lime water but not quite okay and they used it to dissolve the bones, to try and dissolve the bones of this body. Okay, so what happened was, and this is quite funny, is that this guy then planted a whole bunch of Christmas roses. Okay, so what happened was he planted a whole bunch of Christmas roses, so these are the stalks of the Christmas rose at the bottom. Okay, now all of the Christmas roses would pretend that this is pink, okay? All of the Christmas roses over here and over here and over here were pink, but this Christmas rose over here was blue. 
And that actually was what gave the police the clue to the fact that this person had possibly, because they kind of suspected him, they thought that maybe he had actually killed this person, but they couldn't find the body anywhere. And then one of the detectives noticed that that Christmas rose was blue compared to the other Christmas roses that had been planted that were red. And he suspected that this was because there was a body that was actually covered in lye that had been buried underneath this Christmas rose. So what they did was that they tested the soil and they found that it was definitely different from the soil to the rest of them. So then they got out warrant and they dug there and they found the body. And that's how he got caught out. So that was a very famous case of where not knowing that <laughs> acidic soil and alkaline soil cause different colors in your plants and cause your plants to grow different ways. Okay, so that's calcium oxide. So calcium oxide is another one that is used to neutralize acidic soil. Also, we're looking about biological uses. Now, what you need to understand is that the acid in your stomach is hydrochloric acid, which is the strongest acid in the universe. Well, not in the universe, but it's the strongest acid we have on planet Earth, okay? So hydrochloric acid plays an important role in helping digest food. We know this because, I mean, there are some people that eat the bones of things and our bodies are able to digest that, okay? So it is a very strong acid, okay? Obviously too much acid can cause ulcers. So sometimes your body's balance doesn't work out and you end up with ulcers. Now ulcers are sores on the inside of your stomach and your, st and your intestines, which basically eat away the lining of your stomach and hurt a lot, okay? Now antacids, it's, it's as it sounds with the name, antacids are against acids, they're actually alkalines, okay, or bases. And what they use, they use to neutralize excess stomach acid and to prevent, prevent damage from intestines. The example that I've given is milk of magnesia. And the reason I've given that is because we know that milk of magnesia is just magnesium hydroxide. But you guys would probably know it as Another example would be the more modern commercial version would be Gaviscon or even Rainy Tablets. Okay, so Gaviscon, you drink it, it um, they, they have a silly advert where they show them calming the, the, the high temperatures and the flames in your tummy. But basically what's happened is that it is a base and it's neutralizing the acid in the stomach. Obviously, we need to have some acid in our stomach to be able to digest the food, but not that much. Okay. Now let's talk industrial uses, okay? So in industry, sulfur dioxide is given off into the atmosphere, um, either through power stations or from the burning of fossil fuels. But sulfur dioxide dissolves in water to form sulfurous acid, which then again dissolves in water to form sulfuric acid. In other words, we can get sulfurous acid, which is very weak, and sulfuric acid out of the formation of sulfur dioxide. Okay, so what they do is they add calcium hydroxide, which is lime water, to the water, okay, before it is released into, back into the ocean or the sea or whatever. And what that does is it neutralizes the, the, the acidic water, okay, so that, that water is no longer dangerous to the environment. Right, so let's talk about pH. Um, pH is a range or a measurement, a measurement that tells us how acidic something is, okay? And we're gonna be talking about how to calculate pH in a bit, although we might run out of time, we'll see. But what it really is, is a measure of the concentration of the hydrogen ions. pH actually stands for percent of hydrogen plus ions, okay? So if your pH is smaller than seven is new, the scale is one to 14 or zero to 14, right? If something is very acidic, it's going to be one to six, okay? One being the most acidic and six being not acidic at all. Seven is totally neutral. In other words, it's neither a base nor an acid is totally neutral. And then eight through to 14 is basic, right? But 
Obviously, the bigger the number, the more basic it is. And guys, you really need to understand that a strong acid and a strong base are just as dangerous for you, okay? Um, examples of that that you may have experienced before, if you, for example, are washing your face with some, I don't know, let's say, for example, you're desperate and you go into the kitchen and you really want to wash your face or, and you've, the, or from the dirt that's on your face and everything else, and the only... Um, soap that there is like sunlight liquid okay which is not your normal face soap and then you wash your face with it and you'll find afterwards that your skin will feel very dry and very taut very like very stiff and that's because that um, sunlight liquid is actually quite basic it's it's quite a strong base and it's actually removed some of the moisture from your skin and that is why you feel all dry and tight okay so some some soaps do that okay whereas other soaps do the opposite so the point is that a strong base is just as dangerous as a strong acid so now if you look on the table on the right hand side you can see there's a whole list of different molecules you got phosphoric acid tartaric acid citric acetic carbonic ammonia ammonium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide okay so the interesting ones for me are things like the carbonic acid which you find in your physic drinks um, okay, yes, you also get phosphoric acid, but your carbonic acid is the one that you mainly find. That's the one that you find in your um, your Coca-Cola and your, basically every fizzy drink has got carbonic acid, including sparkling wine. Sparkling wine is different from champagne. Champagne, the bubbles are caused by the formation, fermentation. So it's part of the process. Whereas sparkling wine, what they do is they make the wine and then they bubble carbonic acid through it and you end up with bubbles. Okay, so there's a big difference in the method of making it. Whereas a C, so you can see the carbonic acid has got a pH of 6.37, whereas phosphoric acid, which is definitely in Coke as well, has got a pH of 2.15. Then you've got citric acid, which is lemon juice, and that's only a pH of 3.14. Um, and then you've got, if you go a bit down, you've got ammonia. Now, ammonia is a base, and it's quite a strong base at 11.5, okay? And sodium hydroxide, which is also known as caustic soda, and that's really used as a strong cleaning product as well, has got... Um, a pH of 13. So that's also a very strong base. So the bigger the number, the stronger the base, the shorter the number, the smaller the number, the stronger the acid. Okay, so let's talk pH calculations. So remember I said to you that pH means percent of hydrogens, okay? So the equation, and you don't really need to know how they got this, is minus log of the concentration of the hydrogen plus ions. But remember we said that the hydrogen plus ions is already just a shortcut for writing out hydronium ions. So pH is also given as minus the log of the concentration of the H2O plus ions, okay? Just for the record, pOH would be the percent of the hydroxyl ions, okay? And that would equal minus the log of the concentration of the OH minus ions. Okay, and I'll talk to you more about how we can use that tomorrow. Let's just do this example. It says, in a 162 cubic centimeter solution of ethanoic acid, the following equilibrium is established. So we've got ethanoic acid plus water gives you ethanoate plus your hydronium ion. Okay, the number of moles of this ethanoate are 0, 0, 0, 0, 0,001 moles. And it says, calculate the pH of the solution. Okay. So do you agree that we have to look at the number, the mole ratio? So it's one to one to one to one. So if one mole of CH3COO was formed, we would end up with one mole of H3O plus, right? But there wasn't one mole, it is not comma not not one moles. So therefore the number of moles of H3O plus are also going to be not comma not not one. Now we can work out the concentration. The concentration is the number of moles over the volume, but this volume has to be in decimeter cubed, so it's 0, 0,162. So therefore we've got 0, 0, 0,001 divided by 0, 0,162, 
and we get out a calculator and you go 0 0.001 divided by 0 0.162 equals 6.17 times 10 to minus 3. 6 comma 1 7 times by 10 to minus 3 moles per decimeter cube. Okay, so that's what we use. Now it says we want to work out the pH. But pH is equal to minus the log of this number. So it's going to be 6.17 times by 10 to negative 3. So we're going to put a, get our calculator out again and we're going to go minus, not answer minus, we're going to go, no, not answer minus. Okay, we're going to have to do it clear. We're going to go minus the log of the answer. Yeah, it worked. Bracket equals 2.21. Okay, that's just 2.21. 2 comma 2 once so the pH of this thing the pH equals 2 comma 2 1 which is of and there's no units please note because it's a ratio and therefore you can see that's actually a very strong acid okay fairly strong okay right that's it for today we will continue with this um, acids and bases tomorrow in tomorrow's lesson have a great day